We are so blessed by the gifts from your hand. I just can't understand why you've loved us so much. We are so blessed. We just can't find a way or the words that can say thank you lord for your touch when we're empty you fill us till we overflow when we're hungry you feed us and cause us to know we are so blessed take what we have to bring Take it all, everything, Lord, we love you so much. Good morning. Uh, please open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, verse 27 through 29. This is Pastor Ken Adrian bringing us the, the sermon, Taking the Scary Out of Life. So please stand as we read the word of God. Again, it's Romans chapter 8, verse 27 through 29. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, first of all, Judy and I would like to thank this congregation for your generosity and your concern, uh, your empathy, your sympathy uh, during... Uh, the struggle that my mother had over the last several weeks of her life and then finally a week before last passing away and going into the presence of the Lord Jesus. And um, numerous of you uh, were, were able to come alongside of and I appreciate it so much. Um, several of you were able to come to the service, the funeral service which was a week ago uh, and uh, we thank you very much. But Judy and I have been completely overwhelmed by the number of Facebook people, uh, emails, um, text messages, phone calls, and above all, the cards. We have received so many cards. Uh, matter of fact, as Judy told me the other day, she says, you know, we are just overwhelmed with so many, many cards, lovely things that were said, and we thank you so much. Uh, I told Judy, I said, you know, I really think that we had more sympathy cards, or at least as many sympathy cards as we had Christmas cards at Christmas time. So you folks have just gone uh, way, way beyond, and we so much appreciate your attentiveness. We appreciate your attention in, during these, uh, these days of our personal loss. And then I also want to thank Pastor Daniel Dennis for asking me to bring the message this morning. Thank you, Pastor Dennis, and God bless you and Julie and your girls and uh, this entire congregation as we together go forward for, for Jesus Christ. I um, remember a few months ago there was this uh, television commercial. I usually don't want to bring in a, something that secular into a message, but I can't help it. Here is this cute little white dog, and um, he was laying in his little puppy dog bed, and in his mind, uh, he was thinking about his bone. Remember that? And, uh, you know, and just thinking about his bone and, you know, trouble, 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 worry, worry, worry. So he gets out of his bed and he, go, he takes his bone and he digs a hole in the backyard. But then he sees this kitty cat run by. Oh, trouble, 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 trouble. And so he goes, gets his bone, and he takes it and runs down to the bank, goes to the vault, and places his bone in the bank vault. 
Well, he goes home and trouble, 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 worry, worry, worry. And so he goes back to the bank, gets his bone, brings it home again, and lays it beside his little puppy dog bed. Uh, just trouble, trouble, worry, worry, worry. And then the insurance company uh, that sponsors this commercial, uh, they come along and they say this, when it comes to things you care about, leave nothing to chance. We take the scary out of life. I was just thinking about this as believers in Jesus Christ. We go through many, many situations in our lives which are scary and frightful, and they are quite uncertain. Yes, we have times of misunderstandings and disappointments of life, even mistreatments. Sometimes we must work through change. Sometimes we have uncertainties and we also have hard decisions that we must make. Sometimes there are the unexpected dilemmas of life, the crushing blows of defeat. And it's so frightful. And it's sometimes, frankly, it is scary. And we go through the agonizing despair many times and the debilitating sadness of deteriorating health and even experiencing the agonies and the trauma of the loss of a loved one. And sometimes we just wonder, you know, trouble, 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 worry, 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 and it's frightful. Many times the future is so scary. And I want you to know that the Word of God is so clear and so plain to help us to take the scary out of life. Have you been there before? I have. Some of you may be there right now. And I want you to know whether it's a present situation or a past situation it doesn't make any difference because in the future these situations are going to come up again. And even in the frightful, scary times of life, God has a plan and God has a purpose and he will bring us through. In the frightful and scary moments of, of life, God teaches us how to trust and rely upon him three things. In this very familiar passage of Scripture, Romans chapter 8, and uh, it, it actually encompasses verses 26 through 30, and this morning we read verses 27, 28, and 29, but I want you to see three things. First of all, based upon verses 26 and 27, and here we find uh, God's internal work, and verse 26 says, likewise the Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Have you ever been there before when you are so gripped and so overwhelmed by the issues of life? In fact, sometimes those issues of life, they flat out scare you to death. And the Bible here tells us that sometimes it is so severe that we do not even know how to pray. We don't even know what to pray for. We just cry out to God and say, oh God, I'm hurting. Oh God, I don't know what's going on. God, I'm afraid, I'm scared. Uh, sometimes we have those issues and those moments. The scripture says here we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit itself or Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I think this is such a precious verse of Scripture because here we see, first of all, God's internal work. When we see God working on the inside of us, we know that God is at work in our life, even through the misunderstandings of life, even through the mis mistreatments of life, even through the uncertainties of life, even through the crushing blows of defeat even through the agonizing moments of life, the scary times of life, we know that God's internal work is going on in our hearts and in our lives. Just a few thoughts, the Holy Spirit ministers to us in times of need. Every believer is indwelt by the precious Holy Spirit of God, and the Holy Spirit feels the burdens of our weaknesses and feels 
our own sufferings and feels our scary moments. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmities and troubles and problems. But the word help here uh, in, in this verse is actually the present tense. And it means not only that the Holy Spirit will help us, but it also means that the Holy Spirit keeps on helping us in our weaknesses. Now, I like that even better because it's an ongoing process. The Holy Spirit of God who dwells within me and you as a believer in Jesus Christ not only helps me uh, in the hard and difficult times of life, but also helps, it's a continuous thing. He keeps on helping us. I want you to see also the Holy Spirit prays for us. And we've already noticed in the scripture that we do not always know how to pray. We do, not, we do not always know God's will for our life. And the Holy Spirit now, then, is our comforter. And the word comforter in the Word of God literally means one called alongside of. So you have a good friend of yours, and in uh, the time of need, that friend comes alongside of you, prays with you, goes to the store with you, takes you to coffee, that good friend buys your lunch, that good friend comes over, talks with you, that good friend prays for you, prays with you. It's someone who comes alongside of. Now, the Holy Spirit does the same thing. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, the one who comes alongside of us. And in the uncertain times of life, during the scary times of life the holy spirit ministers to us even in those times of life when we are so turned inside out we don't know how to pray we don't know what to pray for we don't know what god's will is in our life and it's those times when the holy spirit pulls alongside of and he prays and he intercedes for us uh, something else i want you to know by the way jb phillips uh, translates in his translation, this verse this way. He says this, His Spirit within us is actually praying for us in those agonizing longings which never find words. Now let me just throw this in because uh, a lot of times our charismatic friends will use this verse of Scripture as proof that we need to speak in tongues and it has nothing to do with that. This has nothing to do with speaking in tongues as, as some of our friends would suggest. The groaning here, the groaning that the King James uh, language uses here, the groaning is done by the Holy Spirit and not by the believer. John 14, 16, here's the words of Jesus. He says, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And it is the comforter who does the groaning, the praying. And we are the beneficiaries of someone special. That someone, the person of Jesus Christ, that someone is God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us. Now, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. His interceding is an exact harmony with the Father's will. Now, there's a second thought here as we move along, um, in, in, as we contemplate taking the scary out of life. The first, not only is God's internal work, but now secondly, I want you to notice God's perfect work. God's perfect work. And that's found in verse number 28. And so let's take a look at verse number 28. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Now, he doesn't say all things are good. Losing your job may not be good, but God is going to use all things to work together for good. Getting cancer is not good, but God is going to use these things in our heart and in our life to bring about good. So he says in verse 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. In other words, he says God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and those that are called according uh, to his purpose. And so here we find, first of all, difficulties are a part of life. 
It's, it's just a part of life. We are frightened and sometimes scared and sometimes we worry. In fact, that's usually the first thing we do is worry. One woman said, I've had lots of trouble, most of which never happened. Isn't that about true? Someone else said, worry is like a rocking chair. It keeps you busy. <laughs> but you don't go anywhere. We worry for actually three basic reasons. You know that. The three basic reasons that we worry, we worry about life itself. And we worry about provision. Uh, food on the table, gas in the car. We worry about those things. And then we worry about the future. Those are the three things that most people worry about. Life itself, provision, and the future. Uh, by the way, it is a biblical reality um, uh, that difficulties are a part of life. Think of Job. Look at all he went through. Lost his ten children. Tornado came through and cleaned them up and took them away. He lost all of his riches and lost all of his goods. And finally, he got so sick and ill and boils all over his body. I remember when I was a kid, I had one boil, and that was enough. Job had boils all over. His wife came along and said, hey, what's wrong with you anyway? If you'd been living right, you wouldn't be so sick. Why don't you just curse God and die? I thought all along that God created a wife to encourage and of course, I'm spoiled with the one I have. Job was a man that went through the difficulties of life. It's a biblical reality. Oh, and then I think of the New Testament early Christians. Think about the, them and those early New Testament Christians. They were persecuted for Christ's sake. And what does the Bible say in daily in the temple and in every house? They ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. And they did that after they'd been beaten three different times. Beaten. Beaten to a pulp and suffering for the cause of Christ. Yeah, difficulties are a part of life. The Bible bears it out. I think of the Apostle Paul himself. Remember when he got saved, and the bright light shined upon him, and after Ananias had prayed with him and all of that, and he was then ready to, to go back and meet the, the believers uh, back in Jerusalem. And just before he went, the Bible tells us in Acts 9, 15, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Here's what God said about Paul. He's a chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And the next verse says, and to me this is the, one of the biggest surprises in the word of God. Verse 16 says, here's the word of, words of God, for I will show him, that's Paul, I will show him how great things he must suffer. I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, to me, this just does not make sense. These two verses seem to be so inconsistent. If God called Paul to preach before kings and the VIPs of his day, it would seem to me that God would exempt him from trouble. It would seem to me that God would, would, would just say, Paul, you, you know, you're going to represent me. You're my personal ambassador. You're going to serve me, and I'm just going to exempt you from all trouble in your life. But instead, the Lord was saying that he would give Paul a job that is bigger than anyone, and you are still going to suffer. When I look at those three examples in the Word of God, I get the idea that difficulties certainly are a part of life. And if you're going through problems and difficulties today, my friend, I just want you to know it's not only not only a part of life, and it's a biblical reality, but I want you to know it is also a present day reality. All, listen, all days are not up days. Some days are just plain old average days, aren't they? 
Some days are difficult days. Some days are just horrible days and bad days. Little five-year-old Johnny, he was in the kitchen with his mother helping his mother to make dinner that evening, and she asked him to go to the pantry and get her a can of tomato soup. But little Johnny didn't want to go in there alone. He said, Mama, it's dark in there, and I'm scared. She asked again, and he persisted. Finally, she said, oh, it's, it's really okay, Johnny. Jesus will, Jesus will be in there with you. Johnny walked hesitantly to the door and slowly opened it, and he peeked inside, saw that it was dark, and started to leave when all at once he had this idea. He said this, Jesus, if you're in there, would you please hand me that can of soup? <laughs> <clears throat> to be frightful, to be scared, to go through troubles and difficulties, listen, it's also a present-day reality. I like what Irma Bombeck said. She said this, if life is a bowl of cherries, why am I always in the pits? It's a present-day reality. But l- listen to me. The verse of Scripture is so potent. Romans 8, 28, look at it again. You know it, I know it, but look at it again. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I want you to know that there is a plan and a purpose in place. I want you to know here the redesigning purpose of God. The redesigning purpose of God works for our good. God is in control. We know that God is engineering the circumstances in our life. He is causing all things to work, all the circumstances of our life to work for our good. And the sovereign God of this universe is exercising divine control. And he's exercising management of every single affair of your life. I like what Warren Wearsby said. He said this, all of the circumstances in your life have to go through the permissive will of God. And all of the frightful and surprising, scary moments of your life have to go through the redesigning purpose of God so that by the time it gets to us, God is going to work out something good. And God is is at work in your life, and he has a perfect plan. Matter of fact, is God has two purposes in that plan, and that is our good and his glory. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And oftentimes we quote, we quote Hebrews 13, 5, For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And so when we trust God to take the scary out of life, not only is it God's internal work that he does, not only is it God's perfect work, but notice verses 29 and 30, God's continuous work. God's continuous, continuous work. And I like this. He works to shape and mold us. And if you would please look at verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, God knew his people in advance. He chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn. God does a continuous work. He works to shape and mold our lives. He desires... He desires us to reflect the character of Jesus, to be like him. Folks, I want you to know that when I am smothered by problems and circumstances, I cannot see my way out, but then how can I deal with it? When I'm surprised by the scary moments of life, how can I deal with that? I must simply understand that God has a plan for me, so I need verse 29 to explain verse 28. And so everything that happens in my life has one purpose and one design, and that is to conform me to the image of Jesus Christ. 
God has a special plan for each of us. Look at verse number 30. He says in, in verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. Having chosen them, in other words, he called them to come to him. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. I want you to see that he has a special plan for each of us. First of all, he called us. Secondly, he justified us. And thirdly, he glorified us. Listen, friends, it is all about Jesus Christ, isn't it? It's all about him. Only, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Not profits, not power, not position or pleasure. It's only Jesus. And when I'm at the bedside with my child raging with fever, Jesus is my comfort. And when I stand at the yawning mouth of the grave and say farewell to the dearest on earth, Jesus stands beside me. And when I sob my heart out because of some private personal discouragement, he is there because, because he is real. Jesus, he is the rose of Sharon. Jesus, he is the lily of the valley. He's the fairest of 10,000. He is the bright and morning star. He is the alpha and the omega. I want you to know that only Jesus Christ can satisfy your soul. Jesus Christ, he's the one that can take the scary out of life. Someday we'll have a resurrected body and we will be transported from the earth to heaven, which is our eternal home. He glorified us. Uh, God is for us. Verse number 30 is very clear on that, uh, that God is for us in his person and in his providence. God is for us. Sometimes we're just like Jacob in the Old Testament. We lament, all these things are against me. When actually everything is working for us. The conclusion is obvious. If God be for us, who could be against us? And in the frightful, uncertain, scary moments of life, and the future seems unclear, I want you to know that the Lord Jesus can take the scary out of life. God is for us. And if that be so, who in the world could ever be against us? Uh, just two thoughts in conclusion will be through. First of all, the believer needs to enter. Listen, you and me, we need to enter each new day realizing that God is for me. He is for you, even in the scary times of life. You know why I know that? The Bible is so chocked full of scriptures that tell us that God is for us. Psalm 118, verse 6, The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Isaiah 41, 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, God says. I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Then I just love some of the New Testament scriptures that say the same thing, that in the scary times of life, the uncertain times of life, during the troubling times of life, the worrying times of life, God is for us and he will hold us up. If God be for us, who can be against us? This is the victory in 1 John 5, 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Romans 8, 37, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 2 Corinthians 2, 14, now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Listen, folks, I want you to know that in the scary times of life, in the troublesome times of life, in the uncertain times of life, listen, God is for you, and he will take the scary out of life. 
one last thought here, and that is that if you are here today without Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to know that Jesus cares for you, that Jesus loves you, that he wants to be your Savior. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Listen, if you're not saved, you need Jesus as your Savior. He'll take the scary out of life. He'll give you the assurance of a home in heaven. He'll give you the assurance of a wonderful life between now and then. Let's all bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful and thankful for the scripture that teaches us that you're in control of our lives. And oh God, I just pray that you do a special work in each of our hearts and lives. Lord, I know from the reality of life that there are those moments where we do not know which way to turn. There are those moments that seem impossible. There are those moments that seem uncertain. In fact, sometimes those moments that just seem flat out scary. And Lord, we trust you. We lean upon you. And I pray, Lord, that you would do a work in each of our hearts and lives today to draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's all stand. And as we stand, we want to sing a song and give you an opportunity to respond. Some of you just may want to slip out of your seat and come to the altar and kneel here and say, Lord, I need you in my life. You're a born again child of God. You're a Christian, but yet sometimes, you know, it just seems as though that you need to be reassured that God is in control of your life. And you just want to come and make that a commitment to God today. Say, Lord, here I am. Believer, we ask you to come. There may be somebody here today without Christ as Savior. You need Jesus as your Savior. Come to the front here. Just say, I want to be saved. We know what you mean. We'll lead you to Christ. Shall we sing together? Would you come? Without Him I could do nothing. Do you?